All right, guys, we're back. Uh, we got Josh Inglis with us today. Uh, so he is going to kind of just tell us a little bit about himself to get started, uh, and then a little bit about his business, kind of what he's doing, best practices, uh, stuff like that. So thanks again, Josh, and just kind of tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, thanks again for having me. Big honor. Excited to be on the call. Awesome. Um, a little bit about myself. I am a real estate broker. I'm with EXP Realty. And so, you know, I do the traditional buy, sell, uh, working with homeowners, working with investors. I'm also an investor as well. We flipped over, uh, me and my brother, we've flipped over 100 houses. Um, we've done everything from carpet and paint renovations, um, properties worth less than on the resale value, as little as 60000 all the way up to over a million dollars. So we... We've been in a variety of neighborhoods throughout the Chicagoland area. Um, also, I am, we have a construction business. And so we, um, we do work for homeowners. We've done work for investors, um, primarily focused on building, but we also do things like kitchens, bathrooms. Sure. And, uh, and then uh, our rental business, that's another side of our business. Um, and then also an author. So, oh my um, gosh, you've, you've hit all things real estate. Thank God you wrote a book though. I'm sure you have uh, so much knowledge to share. So that's, that's awesome. Good for you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so definitely keep it busy with, yeah. with all those avenues. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, tell us a little bit about the investing side to kind of get started here. So kind of, and I guess even if you'd like to touch on what made you transition to that or, you know, if it was a natural progression. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, so I originally started with investing. Oh, okay. Um, so we, I've been investing in real estate since I was 19 years old. I bought my first rental property when I was 19. And um, just over the years, um, buying rentals and then um, over time, uh, that evolved into flipping properties. Uh, we would run out of money from the rentals and now <laughs> we're back into the uh, rental strategy again, um, everything's come full circle and that's kind of where our, on the investment side where we're really focusing a lot of our time and efforts on And you know, on the investing. I mean, I've done everything from, um, uh, like I said, really small jobs we've done, um, you know, seller financing deals where we've financed, uh, uh, properties for the buyer, so we've done all different types of creative yeah. um, real estate type deals. So we have a pretty, like I said, a pretty wide experience on the investing side. And, and really, I, I'm loving the rental side. I, I wish I would have put as much effort into that, you know, about three, four, five, six years ago, just focusing on rental strictly than yeah. flipping properties now. Yeah. So I guess that was going to be, you know, that's kind of what was on my head on my mind. Are you more flipping more rentals or does it depend on the market? Or would you say one strategy is just now that you've had all this experience, you're kind of like, I think that strategy works. Yeah, that's a great question. I definitely think uh, rentals is where you should be at. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, flipping properties is a job. So, okay. um, you know, you can systematize flipping uh, up to a certain point. I have yet to meet um, anyone that's sold a flipping business to someone. Um, so like, let's say, for example, there is a company out there flipping 100 houses a year. I haven't seen any, and then again, maybe somebody has to show it to me, but I've never yeah. seen anyone sell this business to another buyer who's then doing the same type of transactions yeah. is that. And the reason why is because there's so many variables um, versus rental portfolios. Rental portfolios are bought and sold every single day. Mm -hmm. You know, you know you'll, you'll package up a bunch of rental properties and then sell them off to a hedge fund. Um, so just in that aspect, I like it because it's something that, it's much easier to sell. Yeah. Also, you do the work once and finding the property, uh, renovating it if it needs work, and then it pays you the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather do the work once and get paid forever than do the work once and get paid once. Yeah, so yeah. No, that's that really 
And so I know that then you mentioned your contracting business. So how did that kind of play in? Was that kind of a result of struggles that you were having or, you know, because of the flipping, you know, is that, how did that kind of come to be? Tell us a little about, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. The construction, it's one of the hardest pieces of real estate investing is finding reliable contractors for sure. Um, we hear that all the time. Yeah. It's a challenge for new investors. It's a challenge for experienced investors. It's, it's just a challenge pretty much for everyone. Yeah. 95% of the people I talk to, they have that challenge in their business. So, um, so we said, instead of relying on other people to do the construction for us, I mean, we've, we've had contractors, uh, you know, run off with money, do, do work that wasn't to our satisfaction. And, you know, at the end of the day, there wasn't much recourse we could take. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously we could take somebody to court and all that, but it's, it's, it's like at the end of the day, what's the point? Yeah. Um, that's just we, like more expenses. Exactly. And especially if the contractor, you know, a lot of them don't necessarily have a lot of money and you'd be wasting your time even going down that path. Yeah. Um, so for us, instead of relying on other people, we decided, why don't we bring the construction in-house? We can keep the, number one, the quality under control. Number two, we can keep the timelines um, on time. Um, and then we have a lot more uh, control over the budgets too. Um, yeah. So everything, we just have a lot more control of. And then we can also do work for other people because that's a big challenge not just investors, but homeowners have, mm -hmm. where do you find reliable contractors? Um, it's, it's really a challenge, not just for investors, yeah. but for everyone. And so we really saw a big need for that. And, you know, experiencing it ourselves of being taken advantage of in, in mm -hmm. various situations, we wanted to come from the perspective of, hey, we're here to serve, we're here to help. And really, um, help people and you know obviously do things at a at a at a good fair price yeah yeah where we give them a really good quality project that's not going to be strung out for you months know, on end <laughs> yeah exactly it's just super important so yeah and we really we really found that there's just a huge need for what we were doing so yeah we and are you guys primarily in the chicagoland area yes so okay. Our construction company is in um, Chicago in the suburbs. Okay. And you guys do, uh, um, I'm assuming, like larger scale projects that need to be done? Yeah. For like any kind of, you know, just like you're saying, like your homeowner or, you know, like a new construction for an investor? Yeah, absolutely. So we can do brand new construction. Um, you know, we can build, you, you know, we could do a brand new house or we could just do like a kitchen or a bathroom. So, yeah. you know, there's a wide gambit of construction services that, that we offer. And obviously, you know, now, you know, flipping, you know, all these houses and, you know, not that we've seen it all, of course, we haven't yeah. seen everything, but we've seen a lot. I'm sure. And so we have a lot of, a lot more experience. And then, like I said, we have a different perspective too, that necessarily a lot of contractors don't have. So. Yeah. Uh, really is a good advantage for us to to have that experience and um, sometimes oh, yeah. knowing what you don't want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I think just that, one. yeah, that firsthand experience offering that to these, you know, newer investors or especially like on that homeowner. And I'm sure that is, that's huge. Something that's, you know, kind of came to my mind that I'm, I'm curious about you guys, obviously you, you've got so much going on. Where is kind of your role? Like, you know, what's your niche? Do you kind of put your dip your hand in, in a little bit of everything or I'm sure like especially with this construction venture building that out how have you how do you manage that you know kind of finding good people and all of that it's kind of a few questions but <laughs> no that's great questions um I mean I, I don't necessarily recommend people starting different businesses if the other businesses aren't running well mm. and and so you know you need to get things in order with what you're currently doing before you're opening new businesses or um, things. So with, with what we're doing, it obviously comes down to people. So for, for me, I'm actually not 
that hands on on the construction. That's my brother. Okay. Um, we're business partners, so he heads that up. I mean, he's he's in the I would say the trenches of the construction. He always has been. Okay. And so my brother knows a lot more about construction than I do, and so that's his advantage, and that's why he's well suited to head up the construction side. Sure. Of our business. Um, and then obviously, you know, having a good project manager and, and that sort of thing, those are all important things. And, and that's just relationships we've built, mm -hmm. um, over the years of, um, doing all these houses. So, um, that's, that's to, to me, it's the real estate is, uh, I, I quickly found out real estate isn't about houses. It's about relationships. And, and obviously when you get a good contractor or, um, you encounter somebody that's really good at what they do. You hold on to them. You pay yeah. them well. Uh, you pay them on time. And then these people will, because uh, a lot of, you know, the subcontractors, your plumbers, your electricians, your framers, your drywallers, all of them are used to, I don't want to say they're used to, but um, they've been stiffed by, yeah. by, so if you can pay on time and do that and give them consistent work, then they take care of, they take care of you. So yeah. Yeah. Um, that's really the important um, thing that, that we've learned is, is to, to really nurture the relationships we have to ensure that, you know, it's a win-win for, for yeah. everybody involved. Yeah. And I'm um, sure that's allowed you to start this venture is like you're saying those, you know, all the years of experience meeting these people, I'm sure, you know, you know who your go-to people are. And like you're saying, yeah. if you have that opportunity to offer something that's going to work better for them, it's, it's a win-win for, for everyone. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And then the there's a side of uh, that's the construction side. So again, that that's primarily my brother, and I'm I'm involved somewhat with the construction side, but not not hands on. Uh, yeah. Um, for me, I'm also um, I'm more on the the investing side. So okay. my brother, my construction, that's his specialty. That's his what I would call his child in the business, right? Cool. That's, yeah. Yeah. That that's his, um, that's his side and I'm there to support him to help keep developing that and yeah. getting better. And, you know, I constantly encounter, um, subcontractors and I'm referring them to him and meeting with homeowners. And so we, we both do work in it, but, but he's definitely the hands-on guy. Sure. Yeah. For me, um, I'm definitely a lot more hands-on in our flipping business and also the, buy and hold business okay, and, and then the brokerage business. So those all kind of work together because yeah. we're doing a lot of marketing. So we'll meet with, because a lot of the houses we buy are uh, directly from owners. Okay. So sometimes our offer just doesn't make sense. Um, sometimes it's better that they work with the realtor. So if that realtor happens to be me or someone else in my network, then that's what I'm going to recommend. I mean, I think a lot of people... Uh, try to put a, a square peg in a round hole. It, you know, you got it. There's no one size fits all solution in real estate. Yep. And, and so really we kind of have a, the, how can we serve people to um, serve them best? And, and, mm -hmm. and the way we serve people best is by offering kind of them a variety of services. So I use the analogy of, um, by being a um, having loads of experience in different aspects of real estate, it actually you know some people say um, what's the saying um, something uh, master of none. They say uh, jack of uh, all trades, master of none. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would I would argue against that because we we kind of have a lot of experience, which makes us a specialist. Because if they're dealing with another let's say another real estate professional, they don't have that wide variety of experience. So they're trying to put the square peg into a round hole. It just doesn't yeah, work. Yeah. And, and so with what we're able to do is offer people like, hey, you're in this scenario. Maybe it actually might make sense to remodel your kitchen before you list your house because you'll get a lot more money by doing that or going through the yeah. house and cleaning your house or yeah. changing these things or, hey, actually your best bet I know this area really well. Your best bet, don't even do any work. Just clean out the house and let's let's sell it as is because if mm -hmm. we do work to it, 
you might not get every dollar that you put in, you're not necessarily going to get out. So yeah. being able to determine that is, is, is super helpful. Oh, uh, sure. And then it's able, it, it helps us serve more people, which is really important. Yeah. And I, I think that's so true. You know, that, that uh, phrase, it, it works sometimes, but like in that case, I think all of those things are so tied together that like you're saying, that's your expertise and you know that, you know, when you have that many years that you've seen so many things, it's extremely valuable. You yourself yeah. have acknowledged the contracting side, that is, that's a whole different thing for you. So for you, to be, if you were going to be spending your hands on time doing that, yes, like that would be that, you know, that, okay, you can't do it all, you know, but yeah, there's right. times when it's going to, when it's going to go hand in hand. And I think that you've identified that. And I think that's what people, you know, people value a hundred percent. Yep. Awesome. So let's transition a little bit. Um, tell us a little bit about your new book. We've heard awesome things. So kind of give us a, give us the rundown. Well, uh, I didn't necessarily expect it, but I hit number one, uh on amazon in three categories which is pretty cool wow um, yeah which is the most you can rank for i'm the humble brag <laughs> no i mean come on we gotta know that's amazing <laughs> no and i'm sure i didn't know that i'm sure the audience wouldn't have known that either so good so i ranked in yeah three different categories number one which is pretty cool and and the book was really written um it was written for anybody selling their home but it was especially written for people that tried selling their house and were unable to sell it Okay. There's a statistic that many realtors and real estate agents don't necessarily want published. And <laughs> I, you know, through, through my research, I found that over half of the homes in many markets, now this isn't true in every zip code, every market in okay. the United States, but many of the markets in, in over half of the markets in, in my marketplace here in Chicago, this, what, what I found through the research for my book was that over half of the houses that get listed never sell. Wow. Or, or fail to sell. I yeah, should say they, sure. they, might, they might relist it at some point and then it, it eventually sells. But you think like, okay, I'm going to list my house. It's eventually going to sell. Well, it, it, you actually have a better chance of it not selling than you do of it selling. So wow. I, I found that, yeah, this is a statistic that a lot of the national organizations don't want people to yeah, know. Yeah, that's not being published. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would diminish obviously the real estate agents. So I kind of looked into, you know, what's the reason why um, homes don't sell? And it really came down to um, marketing. You know, a lot of homes just aren't marketed correctly. Mm -hmm. They're not priced correctly. There's, there's so many things that, um, and, and I don't blame real estate agents, but there's so many things real estate agents should be doing that they don't even know that they're not doing. Um, okay. That's why I got my license. And you know, again, I, I've encountered so many situations. I'll give you an example. I met with a lady. Um, she met with two real estate agents. Both real estate agents could not help her in her situation. And she literally, we were sitting at her kitchen table and she told us she almost took this bottle of pills that was sitting on the table pretty much uh, to end her life. Yeah. Because she felt like she didn't have any options. Oh, she met no. she met with two realtors. The realtors told her, hey, you need to do this, 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 and this. Uh, otherwise, we can't help. Uh, well, she was uh, essentially living there at the house by herself. She was having financial difficulties. There was absolutely no way she could do what these realtors were trying to have her do. Mm -hmm. um, so again, just finding out what people's needs are and being able to serve them. And obviously um, she worked with us. We were yeah. able to bought her a brand new condo. Oh, paid wow. off. We moved her into the condo before we even uh, got that house. So, uh, you know, there's not many real estate agents out there that I, that I found that kind of. <laughs> outside the do box. That. No, that's <laughs> amazing. Um, but you know, you gotta, in some cases, again, it's, it's, you can't fit a, a square peg into a round hole. Yep. You gotta have creative solutions. Um, and you gotta really find out what needs does a person have. Um, and then how do you serve them to accomplish those goals? So you, you get the end result that they're, um, looking for. And sometimes you can't always get the end result that they're looking for, but sometimes what's the best Mm -hmm. route to go and yeah. kind of being somewhat of an advisor 
um, to them in explaining, all right, here's your options. And here's, obviously, these are all your options. This is what I recommend, but this is ultimately your decision. Yes. Um, but giving people those options and uh, looking at things kind of through a, a different lens to, to make sure that the, that the person is taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that listening piece is, is you know, is, is huge. And, and like you're saying too, um, an, uh, an option for someone, if they're having financial difficulties is not to put money in their house. So that's yeah. not a good yeah. option, you know? So, so you yeah. have to, you're putting it on more credit card debt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not helping them that way. So I think that's really, you know, that's a really great I think really great story really speaks to you and, and your business. Um, and I know this book is all about though, that, that one, that big mistake. So you reference that, let us, you know, let's get, let's get a sneak preview for everyone listening. What is that big mistake? What do we need to avoid? So in, in the book, I, it's called 15 reasons why your house didn't sell um, the blueprint to sell any house. And, and really the, the biggest reason, which is chapter one is pricing. So okay. And you can actually be, believe it or not, you can be underpriced. Like a lot of people think, well, it's like, oh, it's overpriced, right? Yeah. There's actually, many people make the mistake of actually underpricing their home. And I'll give you an example of exactly what I mean. We've done market research on home after home after home after home after home. I'll give you the example of a house that's worth, let's just say the house, houses in the neighborhood are selling between 190 to 200. I've talked about this and I'll pull a lot of real estate agents and I'll say, Hey, what do you think you should list the property for? And I'll say, how many people think you should list for 190? How many think you should list for 195? How many think you should list at 199? How many lists should list at 200? How many should list at 205? How many list it at 210? Most real estate agents will say, list the house at 199. That's actually the biggest, the biggest mistake. Wow. So it's actually underpricing the home. And you can be literally listed at $199, $999, and you underprice the home by $1. And I'll explain why. And like I said, yeah. I, I've done market research on so many studies. I've never seen an example where there's more buyers at $199, $999 than there is at $200. And huh. the reason why is because all online searches are done in even increments. Mm. So if you go to Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, Redfin, they're all done in even searches. So if you list your home at 199, 999, your home will show up in every search between 175 to 200, or it'll show up in all the searches to 175 to 200. But your house will not appear in the searches between 200 to 225 and 200 sure. to 250 because everything is done in even search yeah. increments. Yeah. That's how they're all defaulted. Yeah. So literally pricing your home $1 less, you could literally have 10, 20% less exposure we've seen. Oh my. By $1. Yeah. And so ultimately the house, I've, I've had listings where we've raised the list price and we sell for more than what the previous agent listed the house for. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, but I, when, you know, when you say it like that and it, it does make perfect sense though, because if someone's search starts at 175, 200 is their cap and that's where mm -hmm. your listing is, you know, so to them, they might not even look at it or they might really like it and they're going to say, you know, we really wanted to end at 185. That was kind of our, our max. And if you're not going to come down to there, then we're not even going to consider it. So I think that's, that is enlightening. That's huge. I think for anyone listening. And like you said, you have all the market research in your book. So yeah. I think everyone needs to check that out so that they can, you know, read more, find out more about that. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll just give you a kind of a hundred foot overview of if, if you're listening to this and just an idea. So we'll use the example of if you have a, a house, again, let's just say it's worth 200,000. Don't list it at 199, list it at 200. <laughs> if you think your house is worth 250, don't list it at 249999 list it at 250 if you think your house is worth a million dollars don't list it at 999999 dollars mm -hmm. list it at 1 million even numbers because that's how all the searches are done and if you go to that 999 number or let's say you even go to a million dollars and 1 dollar at the end 
then you really lose a ton of exposure because there's also these invisible lines in real estate where people have these, because most people do very even searches. So it's like, all right, I'm going to look at homes between 450 and 500. As soon as you go 500 and 5,000, in that instance, you might even, your exposure might drop in half wow. by $500. Yeah. So sometimes like, you know, I give the example of a, a neighborhood where houses in this neighborhood were selling between 450 and 460. And what most agents in this neighborhood would do is they'd list it at 500, then they or 499, then they drop it down to 489, then they drop it down to 479, and then they drop it down to 469. It looks something like that, and the houses would ultimately sell between 450 to 460. So what we did is we said, all right, the houses were at 450. The house actually needed work, needed all new windows. The laminate floors needed to be replaced. Um, needed some other things. We listed it at 450, which is what it should sell for. Most people are like, oh, I should list it for more so then I can come down. No, we didn't play that game. We listed okay. it right at its value. We received nine offers in, in, in four days and sold it for over 20000 over the asking price, sold it as is, and sold it in, in literally from the time we had a contract to when we closed. It was three weeks. That's um, amazing. So we were able to call every single shot in this transaction because we said, hey, if you don't like our terms, you don't want to buy it as is, we've got eight other offers that are willing to buy this house. So you're going to do it on our terms. Mm -hmm. Um, or we're going to sell it to somebody else. So you're really able to control the situation when you price it right. And so, um, you know, think about those, those invisible lines. Every time you go over like a 450 or a 500 or a 550, you really drop off on buyers. So knowing how to strategically price the home is, 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 is huge. But oh. if you take anything from this, list on a list on an even increment. It's the biggest mistake I see on the real estate industry. No, I'm so, I'm so glad you shared. Um, I mean, I feel like everyone needs to know more. I feel like everyone needs you to be their agent. You probably don't have that much time, but for anyone who wants to reach out to you, let us know how do we get in contact for you. You know, you're investing, you're contracting, you got so much going on. There's, there's something for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will say, I mean, obviously I am busy, but I'm never too busy. I mean, I've got a great team around me, a great group of agents um, that like I'm still involved, but I make, they're following my processes that I've created. Um, and, and depending on the area, sometimes I will be the, you know, the person you're directly dealing with. Cool. But uh, like, obviously um, we're, I'm always happy to look at your situation, whether it's, um, you know, you're thinking about possibly selling your house or perhaps you're, Hey, I, I'm looking at maybe remodeling my kitchen. Mm -hmm. You know, what are your ideas that you have? And we're, we, we're definitely up on the trends to help you. Hey, if you're looking to sell or even if you're a real estate agent and you're watching this, um, you know, feel free to reach out to me if you have somebody that needs work on their house. Um, and, and you feel like, Hey, we need to do these things to help the, help my client get top dollar. Obviously I wouldn't be the real estate agent in the transaction you would, but we'd be happy to help you with the, with the construction. So we're there to help people, uh, whether you're a realtor, whether you're a homeowner, um, you know, no matter what your real estate needs are, we're, we're happy to help. But the best way for people to reach out to me um, literally is, is uh, number one is Facebook. Awesome. You can find me on Facebook, Joshua. My last name is Inglis. It's I N G L I S. You can, S's and Sam. You can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, okay. Definitely find me on LinkedIn. And then feel free to go to my website, joshuaenglis.com. And then my phone number is 630-544-1504. Like I said, if you um, love talking with people, networking with people, um, and see if there's a way maybe we can work together um, or at least collaborate. So yeah, like you said, real estate is not about houses, it's about relationships. So I love that. We, um, Josh is all over Facebook and LinkedIn. So much great, um, you know, great, uh, I'm losing the word. So much great content. You're always putting out great content, great articles, everything like that. Inspirational quotes, which I love. So, so find Josh. Uh, again, Josh, we totally, we really appreciate your time. Um, 
people definitely get in touch with Josh, check out his new book, um, and, and have a good day. Awesome. And then, uh, again, if you want that book, it's 15 Reasons. Well, actually, I got it right here. I'll oh, yeah, it up show us. The camera. <laughs> Perfect. 15 Reasons Your House Hasn't Sold the Blueprint to Sell Any House. And then that's Perfect. me at the bottom there. So yeah. that's how you spell that's how you spell my name. <laughs> yes. Awesome. And you can find that on Amazon. We know that Josh has gotten all three awards on that. So it's definitely worth it. Awesome. Thanks, John. I really appreciate it. And uh, all the amazing work you guys are doing. And um, you guys are a huge resource, though. I mean, um, so much respect for what you guys are doing. Um, oh. I, I just want to encourage people, too. If you guys have property management questions, you are the people. We're here. <laughs> because you guys are the experts in that for sure so awesome all right well thanks josh all right we'll talk soon thanks again okay. for having me mm -hmm. bye-bye